I'm going to make a Brunswick stew that was uh, a recipe from my wife's mother's mother. And it's been in the family for many years. I've made a few changes because I have to be gluten-free. I have uh, celiac or some sensitivity to it. So I've made a couple changes there, but let me show you the recipe. So this was uh, Winnie Pethel, and it calls out four pounds of beef, four pounds of pork, and one big chicken. It's kind of funny the way they do this recipe. Eight cans of crushed tomatoes, six cans of creamed corn. That's the one that I'm going to modify. I'm going to use regular corn and just grind it up. Three onions, one jar of ketchup. Doesn't say how big, but I'll show you what I did. Can of tomato juice, crushed red peppers. Instead of red peppers, I'm using Rotel and uh, salt and black pepper, pepper. And it talks about, you know, cooking, deboning, and grinding all the ingredients, and then a quarter cup of vinegar, a quarter cup of sugar, and cook over low heat two hours. Now, I find it's best if you get all of your ingredients out so you don't forget anything. In fact, after reading the recipe, I realized I got to get the sugar out. But, uh, I make a big massive batch and then I end up canning it. So I'm going to end up splitting everything in half for each of the uh, containers. So I have two eight quart pans here. Each one of these are eight quart. And then I have another one that I use for like uh, uh, cooking up the onions and then I split up between the two. Then I'll cook the meat in here and then split up between the two big pots. And that allows me to divide it up evenly. And uh, I'll end up with uh, four gallons, um, 16 quarts roughly. So what I have here is uh, crushed peeled tomatoes, six cans. Um, here's the Rotel, which is going to substitute for the crushed red peppers. And then I have a whole corn that I'm going to end up grinding. And then ketchup. We're not going to use this whole thing, but we'll use about half of it split between the two containers. I have leftover beef broth from previous recipes. And then I was able to uh, go to the store. I didn't get everything I wanted on sale, but uh, here's a pork loin. They had it marked down from like $4 a pound down to $1.19 a pound. So that was a really good deal. And then I like buying the boneless chicken thighs because there's nothing there that I got to do. You just uh, cut them up and look at it. Well, I hope I was showing that right. And then over here is the um, beef. Now, normally I can buy these uh, sirloin tip roasts for about uh, $3 a pound from Sam's Club. They didn't have that uh, good price at Kroger, but I, I ended up paying about uh, $4 a pound. Uh, got some on sale, uh, chuck, chuck roast, and they're boneless, so it's easy to just cut up and do there. So anyways, uh, what I'm going to do is just start with the onions, get them all cleaned up, um, diced up. And then, uh, oh, and also I forgot to tell you, I do have a meat grinder here. I bought this at Harbor Freight. And let's see, I don't know if it has a name on it. This has actually worked really well. So I did this recipe last week and it ended up being outstanding. So anyways, let me uh, start processing. So I'm going to put this on, on hold or pause. Okay, as far as the onions go, what I usually do is I cut the ends off the onion and then I take the peel off and then I lay it on its side like this and I slice it and then I turn it this way and then I dice it again. And so this is kind of what the finish looks like. So that gives you an idea. Now I did use uh, very sweet onions. These are either the Valdalia, in fact, I think these are Valdalia, but Texas sweet works also well. You want to use a sweet onion for this recipe. All right, so I took uh, two onions for each one of my big pans and I've got them diced in there. And we're just going to wait because I think now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the meat. Um, i got to cut it into strips so it'll fit into the meat grinder. And I think I'll go ahead and grind the meat and the corn. And then we'll start uh, uh, doing the onions. I did forget to say that I increased the meat on this uh, recipe because I'm really trying to preserve uh, meat. So this ends up being a much richer stew than that recipe, but I think I'm also making a lot more. When you're doing two eight quart uh, recipes, it's it's a pretty good 
I'm sorry, two, two eight quart containers, 16 quarts total. It takes quite a bit of meat. So this is, uh, has about uh, five to six pounds of each of the three types of meats in, in this recipe. So versus the four that they had re uh, listed. But that's what I found worked for me. All right, so let me uh, cut the meat into strips and we'll start uh, doing the grinding. Okay, so I've cut the um, chicken thighs, boned chicken thighs, into strips. And one of the things you need to be careful of when something's deboned is every once in a while there's pieces of cartilage and things in here which I've separated out. So it's a good idea to just kind of pay attention to what you're doing. So this is a nice fatty meat. This should work really well for this recipe. And uh, so let me move this over to the uh, meat grinder and we'll start processing. Okay, you'll have to uh, forgive me as I have no cameraman uh, available here, so I get to do it all. So what we'll do is we'll turn this on. We'll get these strips and just stick them down in the hole like that. Looking pretty good. Now I do have this on the finest setting because you want this ground pretty fine. And uh, you have to speed it up a little bit. They've got a little thing to press it in. It takes a little while, but it's, it's pretty fast. I'm going to go ahead and pause it so I can get this done. Okay, we finished the chicken, and I did want to say the reason why I don't uh, cut all the meats up and run them through at once, this machine says to let it rest, don't let it uh, run 20 minutes continuously. So by, you know, processing in this case the chicken first, and then I'm going to probably do the pork next, um, it allows it to rest as I, you know, get the pork prepared to go through the grinder. But... Uh, I do, did use the finest grinding head on this, and you can see it's actually done a really good job. Looks like a uh, you know, real finely ground hamburger, but that's uh, chicken with a lot of fat. That's pretty nice. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and divide this in half so it's ready to go in the other uh, pots to be cooked. But uh, uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, pork um, um, cut up into strips, and I'll go ahead and stick this on probably just use plates divide it into plates for now got a dishwasher it doesn't matter if you make a little bit of a mess and i just thought of something after i paused it um a lot of the recipes will tell you to go ahead and cook the meat first and uh <clears throat> it probably makes it a little bit easier for grinding i'm not sure i found this actually works really well and you're going to be cooking this on the stove for a couple hours anyways so what i do is i end up just cooking each of the meats individually in a uh, um, frying pan and then I put it in the pot where I'll have the pot already you know going with all of the uh, corn and with the tomato juice and broth and it, it'll uh, it'll actually cook rapidly now initially it'll look a little chunky because of uh, kind of like when you fry a hamburger it'll be uh, chunky but the longer it cooks it kind of breaks it down the way uh, Brunswick stew is supposed to be but I I ended up with really good results last time, so that I'm going to keep doing it this way. It seems to work fine for me. Okay, the easiest way to do a pork loin is just cut uh, a bunch of pork chops out and then cut them in strips. So this is ready now for the grinder. Okay, the pork is now uh, ground up. 
and I decided the easiest way is to uh, split between two bowls. So I got the chicken divided and I'll divide the pork and put it in those two bowls. They're probably not big enough, but when I get to the uh, beef, I'll just uh, divide that when I put it in for uh, browning. But anyways, uh, I'm very pleased with this machine. This probably takes less than five minutes to do these uh, five pounds of meat each one, five or six pounds, whatever it was. But anyways, this is working out really well. Okay, the beef is now cut into strips, and there was only a couple little areas that I had to remove some uh, grizzly stuff, but the rest of it was actually a pretty pretty choice meat, so this is going to come out pretty nicely. Um, you know the old saying, uh, don't try to catch a falling knife? Well, that knife was falling off of my uh, cutting board, and I caught it about halfway to the floor instinctively, and luckily no uh, damage anywhere, first time ever probably, but uh, you know, probably a good idea not to try to catch it so I'll try to remember that next time okay so the beef is now all ground and that actually again works very well uh, last time I put my corn through this thing but uh, that didn't work as well as I would like so I think I'm going to try my little ninja food processor this time because uh, I think it's just faster the corn is just uh little too juicy or something it just didn't seem to work as well as I would have liked I mean it did work but it's just a little more work and uh, so it'll just be one more thing we got to clean up afterwards but uh, let's give it a shot all right let's see if I can do this one one hand here but I've got this uh, ninja and it's got this little bowl with the blades in it I drain the corn stick it in here Put the top on, plug this in, open that, get just knock the corn off the top. All right, probably about four or five seconds. Anybody count that? And you can see it's pretty well ground up. So I think that'll work. So I'll do all six cans that way. And uh, it's much, much less frustrating tr than trying to use the grinder. All right, so that's three cans worth. And I don't know what it is, but it sure smells, smells good with that uh, ground up corn. So I got three more cans to do. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and switch over here and start uh, grilling up the onions. Because I'd like to go ahead and dump the meat in, and uh, with all the juices that I've got, the the broths, and I've got uh, crushed tomatoes, and go ahead and get everything start to cooking while I continue working on the corn. I also do use a uh, splash of olive oil um, to help things out while we're uh, sautéing the onions. Okay, the onions are. Uh just about done here. So I'm going to go ahead and start sticking in the, oh boy, does this smell good too. I'm going to start sticking in the uh, tomatoes. Now one of the things that I did notice is uh, one of my can of Rotels caught at the last second uh, had a chipotle flavor. I typically use the original, but uh, chipotle would probably be a good flavor, but I'm trying, I only had one can of that, so I'm trying to uh, be uniform in my ingredients here. Okay, this is what it looks like with the three cans of uh, crushed tomatoes and one can of Rotel and the three cans of uh, uh, parade corn is what I would call it. Uh, so now I've got to do the same thing to the other pot. Now one of the things that, uh, this is like a really thick, almost like spaghetti sauce at this point. So it will try to spit at you if you don't get the temperature turned down pretty quickly. So I've now turned it down to uh, like a medium low uh, temperature. And you can see that it kind of started splattering. Might have got my white t-shirt here. No, nope, it looks like I survived that shot. But uh, get the lid on as quick as you can and get the temperature down at this point. I gotta grind the corn now. So I decided to kind of follow my recipe I did last time where I kind of pre-cook uh, this meat like you would hamburger. I just put it in the pan. So I'm starting with the pork and chicken the first portion, then I have a second portion, then I'll do the beef last and then uh, split it up between the two containers. But this would be 
one half portion of the pork and chicken so that'll go in one of these pans and then uh, the other one will go in the second pan but uh, just to give you an idea this is eight quarts and we're probably approaching half already so by the time we add the meat in here it's going to be pretty doggone full then I still got to add some vinegar sugar ketchup and uh, potentially some broth we'll see how this works out so that's where we're at at this point so I thought I'd mention um, while I'm cooking up the uh, pork and the chicken that uh, uh, about a year ago I switched over to these anodized pots and I'm using you can see it's uh, kitchen essentials from Calphalon and I love these things they're much better than way back when probably aging myself here but we had the Teflon coating uh, materials and uh, we had stainless for a long time after the Teflon turned out to be a lot of trouble, but these uh, anodized coatings are fantastic. And I just use the bamboo type tools. Uh, they really hold up and last a long time. We put them in the dishwasher and everything, and they're fine. Barb tends to hand wash these pots, and uh, that's a good idea, but uh, overall, these, these work great. Okay, the first batch is uh, nearing completion of the pork and chicken, and what I kind of recommend is that uh, it kind of will chunk up a little bit on you, but just take the end of this, uh, I don't know what you call it, just a spatula, and uh, just kind of break them up best you can. Um, like I said in my first uh, experiment doing this, this is exactly the way I did it, and uh, I didn't worry too much about the chunks, and uh, surprisingly, it just kind of broke down as it was cooking in the when you combined it all together, because like I said, it's going to be in there for a couple hours. So I'm just going to try this a little bit more just to make it uh, closer. But it doesn't have to be fully cooked in this particular process because you're going to go stick it in the uh, in the mix that we have over here, and it's going to be in there for a couple hours. So it'll be fully cooked. You don't have to worry about it. So I think this is actually fine. Um, I'm kind of questioning. I think I'm going to go ahead and drain some of this because this is by far the fattiest, you know, between the pork and the chicken. I'll separate this out and I may add a little bit back in the recipe. So I've got uh, one of these uh, grease sucker uppers and i got a ball jar here. And that's what I'm going to do next, get rid of a little bit of this grease. Okay, I've added the uh, pork and chicken in here and we are now two-thirds full. So we got just enough room for the beef that's going to be in here. Now keep in mind, I've got probably a little bit over 15 pounds of meat. So each pot's going to have you know, like seven and a half pounds of meat added in here. So that's why this is a pretty, uh, pretty dense meal. And uh, I would argue this is going to be a great survival food because you can put this over rice and stretch this quite a ways. Each quart jar will go probably four people easily when you add uh, make some rice first and then put it over the top of it. But this is a, a very, very uh, dense meal and uh, probably shouldn't eat too much of this at one time. It's a, it's a really, I love it more than anything. It's great for a cold day. You know, I should have probably started the video with this, but uh, this is my backyard and you can see um, the trees are changing colors and it's actually quite beautiful out here. That's a uh, shed, 12 by 12 shed, that's about uh, 12 feet tall that we built from trees from this property when we had to cut in our driveway. And I've got a bunch of leftover rough sawn lumber, and I've also got cherry and uh, pecan down there that I'm going to split for my smoker. Um, got a nice greenhouse, and I raise rabbits and also chickens. So I've got a nice little setup down here for that. Anyways, back to cooking. Yeah, back to cooking. I forgot to mention, uh, this is how much uh, grease I took out of that uh, first pot of probably six pounds, um, three pounds of chicken and three pounds of uh, pork. But since I used the pork loin, it was pretty uh, pretty lean already anyway, so that's not bad. Uh, I did leave probably another half of that uh, for the stew, so I left that in there for flavor. Okay, I finished... Uh, the pork and chicken and it's in the second pot this one's still cooking away and now I've added the beef so I can brown it up a little bit and divide it up we're almost done 
Now, just for a time check, this is taking a little bit of time here. Let me zoom in on the clock here. All right, it's 3.30. I believe I started this at 1.30, so I got two hours in this already, even though so far you've only seen 20 minutes. So you got to plan to uh, spend a little bit of time on this one uh, when you're cooking this. But otherwise, this is, uh, this is a pretty straightforward recipe. Now, if you really want to impart some other flavors, if you cook your meats first, like uh, I've got a professional smoker outside, or even if you grill the stuff, um, it will add some additional flavors. It just was uh, not a uh, great day to be outside. First thing this morning, it's pretty dang cold, like 49 degrees, and uh, I didn't want to add that extra time of cooking where I can just come in here and basically um, fry up hamburger like you would for spaghetti or something. And uh, it's even though I got to do it three times, it's probably about 15, 20 minutes each one to get it done. And so I've done this the last couple times, but at some point I may go ahead and do the meats like the day before and then grind it up. And uh, that would give some special special flavor to this but this again is a pretty rich recipe and uh, this turns out just fine the way it is so keep that in mind you can you can do some things to improve this when you've been cooking for two hours you get a little hungry so what i do is i break out my homemade gluten-free salsa that uh, i actually have a recipe out there if you uh, look on youtube you'll find i show you exactly how to make this but this stuff is amazing and I, I have several different types of chips that I like to use, but this is the one they carry locally. Santitas. And uh, this is a thin chip. I like the thin chips, but I'll tell you what, this is amazing salsa. Let's have a couple bites. Sorry, I don't mean to eat in front of you, but I'm hungry. Also wanted to complain, even though I'm using Heinz, I forgot to look for something else that doesn't have the high fructose corn syrup, but number one ingredient on this. Actually, it's not number one. Quite a ways down. So tomatoes, distilled vinegar, and high fructose corn syrup. But I'd prefer if they'd get rid of the corn syrup, uh, high fructose corn syrup, and just use regular sugar. I've been reading a lot about that, that our body really doesn't know how to process that, but uh, probably been eating it for uh, 57 years since I was a kid, so that's what we're still eating for now, until I can find a suitable replacement. All right, back to cooking. I did want to introduce a couple of my assistants. Dougie on the left, he was named after Doug on that uh, movie with the balloons, I forget what the, Disney I think it was. And then Buddy on the right. Buddy's about 13 and a half, and Dougie's uh, about ready to have a birthday if you hadn't had one already. But uh, both labs, and both very helpful, cleaning up my mess. Uh, had a few dropsies here, but they don't mind. They take care of it for me. Now the beef is just about uh, cooked, and one of the things I notice is not nearly as stringy, and it uh, tends to stay still finely ground. It doesn't clump up like the chicken and pork does. So this is actually working out really well. In a few minutes, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, divide this up between the two pots. And then the bulk of the work is done at that point. Okay, the uh, beef has been divided between the two pots. And you can see we are getting full. So we're going to make the full amount here. Now, what's left is we have to take some of this Heinz ketchup. And let's see how many ounces is this bad boy. This is 50 ounces, but I'm probably going to use about 16 ounces uh, for each one of these. And then you got to use uh, sugar and vinegar. Let's go back to the recipe here. Got it all covered up. So for each pot, uh, where is it? Oh, quarter cup of vinegar and a quarter cup of sugar. And then all you got to do is just let that stuff cook for a couple hours and it'll break down. You could see. That it's uh, still a little bit chunky, but don't worry, it'll it'll continue to break down. That's the pork and the chicken. All right, let's uh, let's get some ketchup in here and the sugar and vinegar. Okay, assistants, how many cups is 16 ounces? You don't know? Well, 
It just so happens on my uh, on my little handy dandy thing here. It says uh, 16 ounces is two cups right here. Two cups. So that's what we're gonna go with. Okay. So the, basically the recipe is complete. It calls for some uh, pepper and salt and things like that. But uh, last time when I cooked this, I decided not to add that. And uh, I kind of leave it up to the individuals to uh, season it to taste. Like, uh, for instance, I like mine a little spicier. So I would add some sriracha. And uh, I did not necessarily find this needed any salt or pepper. And I try not to add it to... Uh, for most things, but uh, some things actually need it. This has so much flavor from the tomatoes and ketchup and everything. In fact, I would argue probably that additional sugar we added was not necessary with the amount of sugar they have in ketchup anyways. But you just need to uh, you need to cook it and decide what you want and then just massage it a little bit. This isn't like baking. You can, you can uh, recover from just about everything on this. You just got to add some more tomatoes or something if you make it a little too salty and, you know, but... Uh, that's it for this recipe. I'm going to cut it off at this point, and I'm going to do a second video that uh, talks about canning specifically, because that's like another whole process. It's, it's actually much simpler than what we just went through. So in 26 minutes, you actually got something that took about uh, two and a half, three hours to accomplish. This still has to cook about two hours, and uh, I'll be canning late tonight to get this stuff done. All right, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit like if you uh, if you liked it, and I'm gonna have more gluten free things in here. I've I've had to adjust my um, diet back about ten years ago because I just all of a sudden could not eat um, things with gluten. So have a good one. Thank you for watching.